For too many of America's soldiers, the deepest wounds are the ones you can't see. Post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, a relatively new term for a condition that's been with us since wars began. This piece about having an injury, an invisible wound, is not just from Iraq and Afghanistan. This happened in Vietnam, this happened in Korea, World War II. Thousands of year of warfare, this thing continues to go on. PTSD was known as the thousand yard stare, it was known as shell shock, people had all kinds of different names. They called it shell shock, they call it combat fatigue, they called it all these things. Many names for the same condition, but very little understanding for the soldiers it affected. It used to be what they call three hots in a cot. You know, three hot meals, sleep it off, get back to the battle. Um, and that's the way it was treated. And if someone uh, went back home, they were seen as soft you know, or lacking courage. We're just now understanding, though, the brain and what we can do to help treat this, all right? because this is a treatable issue. Post-traumatic stress is a medical condition. It is a biological process in the brain generated by experiences that service members have in extreme conditions. And the brain adapts and responds to life-threatening emergent situations, goes into an overdrive state. But then when you come back from war and you're back in the US, in your community, and everything is safe and low key, there are periods of time where the brain flips back into that mode. You come home and things aren't as fun or as pretty because you're constantly thinking about, is there possibly an enemy out there or is there a bad person or this bad could happen. So your perception of reality changes. It's usually the people who care about you and know you that notice it first. An important source of information is loved ones, is people who are close by, who know you, who can say, gee, you're, you're different in the way that you're responding to everyday events the things that they're going to describe to you are going to include uh, moodiness and irritability, a sense of detachment and looking preoccupied as if you have something on your mind or you're distracted or you're not quite settled and relaxed. Now you'll find that you have trouble sleeping. You may have what's called intrusive thoughts uh, that flashbacks to the really bad events. Things can trigger that, a, a quick sound, a door slamming, and suddenly it's like gunfire to you again. Just the smell of something, maybe just on the grill of cooking a hamburger, may remind the soldier or someone else of, the, uh, of, of, of something burning in, in combat. And you get back these memories in anxiety, and you may start sweating, and to the point that many of these folks would start avoiding social situations so they don't have that. In some cases, um, their fear and anxiety get to such a way that they will actually engage in some other behaviors, like walk around the neighborhood at night, like they're on night patrol. Because you don't believe you have it, or you don't believe you have any issues with it, that you refuse to talk about it because you think, okay, I'm tough, I can handle this. These young men and women are warriors. They have a can-do, will-do, competitive mentality. That's what makes them great at what they do. But it's hard to break out of that and say, I, I need to go to somebody, I do, I do need help. You just need to have folks understand post-traumatic stress and understand what to do about it, that there is treatment and that treatment helps. What's really interesting in this time in our, in our lives and in this war in particular is that the military and the Army specifically has really changed its attitude about PTSD, recognizing that it is a very serious problem and it's something that they want to tackle. The military has changed its approach from before it was seen as a sign of cowardice and now it is seen as an injury that you have to work through. Mental health has become a high priority with the military. They've spent a lot of money in funding new projects and research and trying to get guys help getting qualified therapists to help. And many times it's sort of our warrior ethos, our culture, uh, that you don't want to go forward, you don't want to ask for help. Take a look at Staff Sergeant Carter, all right? Presented the Medal of Honor, President Obama did here a couple months ago. He came forward, all right? He had a platoon sergeant that said, hey, you have an issue. He escorted me down to behavioral health and uh, he sat in for my first session and that was the beginning of my treatment. But the thing that I need to emphasize is the fact that if it wasn't for um, my leadership noticing a change in me, if it wasn't for them acting on it, then I may not be here today. 
for me, what happened was I deployed in 2004 and I uh, was over in uh, uh, Iraq. I blown up in my room by a rocket and, you know, banged my head against the wall. And because, you know, Sergeant Majors somehow get this perception they need to be tough guys all the time, I didn't go get any help. I made a lot of uh, bad decisions and started to uh, get on a kind of a slippery slope. Uh, I had to get some help. And I did. And I spent two years in behavioral health counseling to, uh, to try and get better and, and help myself, my family, and the things that are important to me. Getting back in action almost always requires inspiration. And while extreme athletes aren't facing the life and death realities of the servicemen, the drama and trauma they do experience can give military PTSD sufferers something to relate to. For U.S. Marine Jesse Williamson, Focusing on what was important in his life was the key to coming back from the edge. I was in an IED attack. I was riding in a Humvee. I'm a machine gunner. Uh, I got blown out of the Humvee. Uh, launched about 60 feet in the air. Uh, landed back on the Humvee. My staff sergeant actually ran up, grabbed me, saved my life, you know. Uh, unfortunately, it killed all my buddies inside the vehicle. But, uh, you know, got to keep moving forward, you know. Upon returning home, Jesse was diagnosed with PTSD and sought treatment, coming back stronger than ever, becoming the first double amputee to race in the prestigious Baja 1000 off-road race. How motocross helped me overcome my PTSD is, uh, you know, going out and being able to train, have something to look forward to every day rather than just sitting at the house. I try not to look at myself as an amputee. Um, you know, it's just because just I'm missing my legs doesn't mean I can't, you know, go out there and do some of the things that other guys are doing, you know? David Mitchell learned this firsthand. When his convoy was blown up in Iraq, David escaped physical injury, but the emotional scars led to a diagnosis of PTSD. It's impossible to go to that situation and not change at all. And so you have to figure out a, a new world and a new way of life. Um, and, and you have to get an appreciation for it because it's really easy to be really bitter about a lot of things. Finding helped me a lot because it helps me get the stress out. It gives me something to work for. It gives me something to look forward to every day. Like, I'll never be perfect at it. Um, I probably will never even be great at it. But, uh, you know, get out there and do my best and, and try to work through and, and be, as, be as tough as I can be. and Just, just try to stay busy and just try to keep moving. and. and can't say it enough, but you, you got to enjoy life. You got to figure out how to enjoy life. It's, it's crucial. Getting back in action can also mean meeting other kinds of warriors who can relate to what a soldier might be experiencing. Talladega, five laps to go. I'm running on the inside lane, and then boom, somebody hits me in the right rear. Next thing you know, I'm barrel roll. And it's an unexpected event. Yeah, when you ring your bell in NASCAR, you want to come forward and you want to show everybody that it isn't something you need to hide. There's so much information that we can receive by admitting that we feel a problem. And the way that you make improvements into the future is to go through the steps and to understand as much as you can about it and not be afraid of the situation. Professional snowmobiler Paul Thacker wasn't afraid of anything until a crash during a routine practice jump changed his life forever. So I'm laying on the landing, catching my breath, and something's not right. I mean, I can immediately tell something's not right. I'm like, okay, what's the deal? And then, I, and then it it's just hits me that, okay, you can't move your legs. So as I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, well, you, you kind of knew this was a possibility. With this essential realization, the hard work began. So I was um, fairly quick to accept, okay, nobody knows what's going to happen down the road, but I know what's happening right now. So we got to figure out how to get by right now. We'll worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. If you stay in that moment, that's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to stay in that moment. Because it's real easy to slip back and just be like, I'm already done. I'm not getting out of bed this morning. I hurt, but it goes away really quick when you make that conscious decision that you're like, no, I'm not going that way. I'm going this way. For Paul, this way meant getting back on his machine as soon as possible. 
and today he's even competing again, racing in the Winter X Games. I wouldn't go back and change it now, if even if I could, because I have you know been able to put myself and and make this injury something that hasn't held me back. I've been able to. I have a I have a great life. I have a great life. I I do amazing stuff and meet amazing people and all of that stuff wouldn't have happened or I wouldn't be where I am now if that day would have never happened. For athletes and service members, the key to successfully battling the long-term effects of PTSD is getting the right support. Congress does care and the military cares a great deal about each individual soldier. Because it's also a matter of the commitment that soldiers and sailors and airmen and marine learn is you don't leave anybody behind. And that doesn't matter whether that battlefield is in the sands of Iraq or the mountains of Afghanistan or downtown New York or Cleveland or San Diego. It's wherever they are. We don't leave somebody behind. And people have to understand if they have an issue that they come forward that you know leadership and their brothers and sisters in arms here should not hold that against them. That they got to be able to come and continue to move forward. Your your personal example really, I think, says that uh, you know, very strongly for our soldiers. That if you have an issue, you come forward, you get some help, and you can be the Sergeant Major of the Army. We want you better, and we want you better because we need you back in the fight. We need you to get the care that you need so that you can continue to contribute to our Army to the best of your ability. If you're suffering through post-traumatic stress, chances are you're not aware of it. It's actually your, your co-workers, it's, it's, your, it's your family, it's your husband, it's your wife, it's, it's your leadership that is noticing the change in you. Whether it's combat related or not, they're the ones seeing it. It is up to you to take the responsibility and listen to them. They're going to give you the tools to help yourself. And it's going to be long, it's going to be difficult, and I can honestly say, for me, it really sucked. But I'm here right now because it worked. The statistic is staggering. Somewhere in this country, an active duty service member takes their own life every 24 hours. But the U.S. military is attacking that number, determined to fight for the life of each and every one of its own. And we're winning. Through more effective diagnosis and counseling support, more men and women from every branch of our armed forces are finding their way back to healthy, more productive lives in and out of uniform. If you or anyone you know is suffering from PTSD, please don't wait until it's too late. Get help now. Remember, we're all in this fight together. <laughs>